Hey guys, it's Katie from MountainModernLife.com and today I'm going to share how you can take vinyl roller shades and transform them into burlap roller shades. And this is a really simple project, especially once you get into your rhythm. Anyone can do it. It doesn't require any sewing unless you want to. And it's also really easy to customize with whatever fabric you want. Now, just to give you a little bit of a backstory, when Eric and I first started renovating the RV, I was really excited to frame out our RV windows, but unfortunately, it was just one of those projects we didn't get to until after we hit the road. Now, luckily, Lowe's does sell these vinyl roller shades that you can cut down to size right there in the store, so that's what we did on our way out of town. And I think the shades cost like 7 bucks to 15 bucks each, which was really great because we needed to cover, I think it was like 7 or 8 windows, so it was really budget-friendly. But then again, you do get what you pay for. Now, the vinyl shades did uh, do their job, and when they were rolled up, you really couldn't see them. They pretty much just disappeared into the ceiling or the wall. But it was when they were rolled down that they looked really cheap, and they even smelled like beach balls for a couple weeks, which was really funny. But uh, it wasn't until we finally decided to frame up the windows and got it done, which we do have a video on that if you're curious to see how we did it, that I finally decided, okay, it's time to go ahead and update these roller shades. And luckily, all that entailed was taking the old fabric off of the spring mechanism and adding my own fabric to it. So if you're interested in making your own burlap roller shades, let's go ahead and dive into the materials you'll need. All right, the first thing you're gonna need is a roller shade, and we're gonna be repurposing the ones that we got from Lowe's close to two years ago, but you can find these at pretty much any hardware store. Some home decor stores sell them. You can also find them on Amazon, and I know Ikea has similar ones as well. You'll need some burlap, and I'm using sagless burlap for our roller shades, but I'll get into that in just a minute. You'll also need a measuring tape, and you may find that a fabric measuring tape is easiest, a piece of chalk, and you could actually use one of those um, fabric chalk pencils. I had one and it just wasn't so great. Honestly, it wasn't working very well on the burlap. So I ended up just sharpening up a small piece of chalk. A ruler or a yardstick, basically something that'll help you create a straight line with your chalk. Some scissors, and honestly, I'd recommend using fabric scissors or just something that's sharp enough to cut through the fabric, but that you maybe don't mind getting some of the adhesive on that you can easily clean off later. And uh, I did use some fray check for a few of our shades, and that's just to help the um, ends from fraying continuously after you cut the fabric. But to be honest, I ran out and I ended up just using Mod Podge and a brush, and this actually worked a lot easier. It was way more cost effective. So if you have Mod Podge on hand, or even if you don't, if you don't have fray check on hand, I would definitely recommend just using Mod Podge to uh, keep the frayed edges from continuously fraying. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. Fabric fusion tape. And this is essentially a double-sided permanent adhesive that you can use on your fabric to create hems. They also have an iron-on version, but I decided to go with the peel and stick just because it would be easier. Masking tape. And this is something that you may not need. It's definitely optional, but I'll show you where you may want to use it a little bit later on. And a steamer or iron to get the wrinkles out of your fabric. When it comes to creating burlap roller shades or really any fabric project in your home, I highly recommend ordering samples first, and this will save you time, money, and headaches down the road. And I'm definitely speaking from experience because for this project, I originally ordered some burlap on Amazon and it didn't work. I thought it was gonna be a tight enough weave, but ultimately, whenever we had the lights on in the RV at night, you could still pretty much see through it. That's definitely not what we wanted. So as you can see here, these are two different types of burlaps. The one on the left is called a Sultana or Sultana burlap. I'm not really sure how you say it. Now, this is a tighter weave than you can find at most craft stores, but uh, it's light filtering, except you can still kind of see through it. Now, the one on the right is considered a sagless burlap, and as you can see, it's a much tighter weave, and that's ultimately what I ended up going with. I want to say that the burlap I ordered on Amazon was 10 ounces, so it was just slightly less than that uh, Sultana burlap that you can see here on the left. Now, if you're putting up curtains and a roller shade, this may work for you, especially if you want something just, just to have some more texture that's light filtering. But if you want something that's more that gives you more privacy, I would definitely recommend going with either a more burlap linen material or the sagless burlap like I'm using. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your roller shade and remove the existing fabric from it. You're also gonna wanna take the plastic or wooden bar from the bottom hem and take that out and set it aside along with the spring mechanism. 
Next, you're going to want to measure your windows for the roller shades, and I'll go ahead and leave a couple links in the description box for tips on measuring for an inside versus an outside mounted shade. But once you have your measurements, you're going to mark that down on your burlap and cut it down to size, making sure to cut it really straight. Now, I did measure an extra inch on both sides of the width, and that's so that I would have a little bit more flexibility when cutting it down a little bit more since we're using inside mounted shades. Now, if you're doing an outside mount, you'll definitely have more flexibility with the width and the height of your actual fabric. Now, burlap can fray pretty easily, but one thing that's great about the edging is that you can remove all of the loose thread, and once you get one continual piece, you'll know that your edge is pretty straight. This is a good time to go ahead and steam or iron out your burlap fabric. And to be honest, I did this a little bit later on with some of our shades, but I think it's a great idea to do it early just so you can avoid accidentally removing any of the adhesive from the fabric fusion tape or from the Mod Podge. Once your burlap is cut down to size, this is a good time to go ahead and add your fray check or Mod Podge to prevent any extra fraying from your fabric. And what I did is I actually painted about an inch inward into the fabric. Now don't worry, it's gonna go on white, but it will dry clear. And this way when I cut it down, it's not gonna to continue to fray. And this actually gives me a little bit more flexibility because even though I could have just maybe painted on about an eighth of an inch of the Mod Podge, I knew that I may have to cut my fabric a little bit more to fit within our inside mounted frame. So I wanted to give myself more flexibility with being able to cut it continuously if necessary without having to repeat the Mod Podge process. Here's the frayed edge maybe 15 or 20 minutes later. And you can see that the Mod Podge has dried completely clear. You'll notice once the Mod Podge or the Fray Check has dried on the edge that it's a little bit stiff and that makes cutting it really easy. It also makes cleanup a lot easier, but you may want to keep that fringed edge. So if you're doing an outside mount, I think it's fine. I think it's when you're doing an inside mount that it becomes a little bit more of a struggle. At least for me it was because I was having trouble getting both sides to be completely even and making sure that the light still wasn't coming through on the edge. So if you're doing an inside mount, I definitely recommend cutting it to be straight. Um, I just preferred that look, but you may prefer the fringed edge. So just something to keep in mind. At this point, you can go ahead and attach your material to the spring mechanism. You'll just want to pay attention to the direction that the shades roll up, as well as the ends if you already have your brackets installed. But what I did is I just took a piece of chalk and I actually drew it along the seamed line of the spring mechanism just to make it easier to line up the fabric. You can then use the chalk as a guide to place your uh, fabric fusion tape. This is also where you could use something like masking tape to attach the fabric to the spring roller mechanism. I actually did do this for a few of our roller shades just because I had run out of the fabric fusion tape at one point and it did work really well and when the shades rolled up or rolled down you can't see it so only I know it's there. So that's definitely an option um, if you run out of the fabric fusion tape or you're just looking for something a little bit more cost effective, you may want to consider using something like masking tape or some kind of heavy duty uh, double sided tape. You just want something that's going to be strong enough to hold the burlap in place. Now with that said, if you plan to do this project by yourself, it may actually be easier to use the fabric fusion tape. And I say that because when we did use the masking tape, I really needed Eric's help to hold the spring roller while I attached the fabric. So that's just something that you may wanna keep in mind. Once your fabric is attached to the spring roller, you can go ahead and start slowly rolling it up just to make sure everything is nice and even. And if your brackets are already installed in the window, you can even pop it up just to see how it looks and make sure that the width is good. And if necessary, you can even cut a little bit extra off. There were one or two instances where I did have to do this and it was really simple. And since I had already added the Mod Podge a little bit further into the fabric, it didn't create any extra fraying. I just recommend cutting one string at a time just so that you don't overcut. And the final step will be creating the bottom hem for the plastic or wooden bar to add a little bit of weight to make it easier to pull the shade up and down. To do this, I first flipped the roller shade over, and that's because I wanted my hemmed edge to face outside versus inside the RV. And I then measured three inches from the bottom and created a straight line with my chalk, and then that way I would have a guide to place the fabric fusion tape. Now three inches may or may not work for you, but that's just what I used. It was then as simple as using that chalk line as a guide to fold the material over and attach it directly onto the fabric fusion tape. I then applied a little bit of pressure just to make sure that everything was permanently bonded. You could then slide the plastic or wooden bar into the pocket you just created and your shade is done. All you need to do now is get it installed. 
Now, since we're installing these inside our RV, we actually replaced the small nails that came with the mounting brackets with little screws. And that's just to make sure that the roller shades stay in place and are secure, especially when we're driving down the road. All right, that about wraps up how to make your own burlap roller shades. And ours may not be perfect, but I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. Plus, they add a nice rustic, cozy vibe to the RV, especially when they're rolled down. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap right here. Now, no one can really see through that, but the reason for it is we actually had to move the brackets down just slightly in order for there to be enough space for the burlap to completely roll up. And that's because the burlap is a little bit thicker than the vinyl that was previously there. So that's just something that you'll want to consider if you're doing an inside mount versus an outside mount. And if you are doing an outside mount, I can say your life's going to be so much easier because there's going to be a lot more flexibility with the width and height versus an inside mount where you want to be a little bit more exact. But I will have a post over on the website with some more pictures and information in case you're looking for something to reference back to. But if you have any questions or tips, definitely leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again soon.